Hello everybody, this is a new video tutorial on V-Ray for Cinema 4D. This time I'm um, showing you how to do a backplate compositing. That means you integrate a 3D object, a 3D scenery, the three-dimensional car, with its cast shadows into a background image. And there are some things that play together here. We have an image-based lighting, that is, the car is lit by an HDRI, and the background image is showing the same image as the HDRI, but as a normal flat image. So this is what we use as a background. And then the light produces cast shadows on the floor, and we manage to integrate the shadow without showing the floor that we need for that. So how do we do this? I will show you. So these are the three major parts, HDR lighting, the background image, the shadows, and the fourth subject will be the material, just um, in short, just to show you how you can um, adjust a white lacquer or varnish material um, resembling speculars and reflections in this way. I won't deal with the lights that look a little bit, you know, too dark or not glowing enough something and we don't see any lights falling onto the street. This is something I don't deal with either and I'm not dealing with the uh, wheels. I don't like them that much but I didn't deal with these things too. So not the lights, not the wheels, not the lights in the front and the um, only thing is the white finish of the car. But this will come in the end. Uh, we talk about render settings of course and global illumination and stuff like that. So, uh, first of all, you need images for this, and I got some images from HDRI for you. This is a site where you can download free samples, free HDRI images and backplates, and I took this one, get the set for free, it says, and it's free, it actually. And it's a set of two TIFF pictures to be taken as a background image. You have to decide for one of them, of course, and this is the 32-bit HDRI image that you can use for the lighting. So, I got this and used it in my scene. So, why don't we just take the standard layout and switch to a very simple scene, showing only a 3D model of an Audi A6. I got this from Stefan Laub when I was in his workshop. Thank you very much, Stefan. And it's full of stuff. And we have a camera with a V-Ray camera tag already to it. But first of all, let's look to the render settings. Command B. We have a um, default set of settings. We decide for the V-Ray bridge to have the V-Ray renderer. And we look for some things in the first place, just to be sure that our test renderings won't be as long. I'm using a laptop computer and it, this is rather slow compared to a big machine and I'm very dependent on having bad settings in the beginning, or let's say economic settings in the beginning, just to not wait, wait hours for the results. First of all, let's look to the anti-aliasing. I would always connect this to the DMC sampler in the first place. You can do a lot of fine-tuning when you are dealing with your final renderings, but in the first place you just need a very economic set. So I just connect the anti-aliasing values to the DMC sampler, which is the chef anyway. So just check it. Then we don't have to do anything here anymore. So now going to the DMC sampler. I don't change anything here but the global subdivision multiplier. I set this to 0 0.5 because what it does, it just reduces the subdivision for every map, shadow maps, light maps, reflection maps, specular maps, stuff like that, all over the scene. So this is why it's called global subdivision multiplier. Okay, so I hope this is enough to make it economic in rendering, indirect illumination, of course you have to switch it on, and I decide for a very, very fast preset. Okay, so this is quality, but, or, or in this case, low quality. Now we go to the color mapping. The color mapping is crucial to have your system calibrated. Just be sure that color mapping 
is uh, adjusted the right way. First of all, the most important thing is please check linear workflow. I don't talk about linear workflow, what it is, and about all the um, special features of it. You can watch it in, there is some very nice um, tutorial or something in the internet. Just uh, Google it, but please be sure that this is checked. Then the gamma has, been, uh, has to be set to 2.2. Don't ask me why. This is the same subject. Just please Google it, look it up, and you know why. Gamma 2.2, linear workflow checked. If you use type linear, you can just leave it like that. You can adjust the um, light bright, light's brightness using the Reinhardt type later on. I will do this if I remember it. But in the first place, linear is quite okay. Okay, so this is calibrating the system. This is very important. Now the output is set to 800 to 600. That is okay. We have to change this later on because our background image has a certain ratio and we want to have this ratio too. But in the first place, we haven't got any background image, so we just leave it like that, just to be sure it's not too huge. Okay. So this is the render settings. So now we have a camera, we have the V-Ray renderer implemented, and now what I want to have to just um, start with the HDR lighting, I want to have a neutral white color on this car. And as I check this out, there are the body shell, and I think the no chrome, chrome surfaces, they bear this um, material, and I just um, define a new Oops, a new material, a V-Ray bridge, advanced material, and assign this to the body shell and to the chrome surfaces. Okay, this worked, so I'll do it just like that, and I don't bother with the rest of the car. Okay, now this material has got only a diffuse layer channel, and this is exactly what we need. It's, not, it's only for testing, it's not the final material, uh, material with reflections and, and speculars, but it's uh, a base material. So, diffuse layer is set to 100% wide, never ever choose a 100% wide, just if you want wide, take 95 or something like that. As Stefan says in his official tutorials, 100% um, wide uh, enhances render times, or can enhance render times, because the reflection calculation um, is just taking longer than, than ever. So um, what I understood is that actually there is no pure white material anywhere in reality, so just uh, reduce it a little bit. Okay, 95. This is all. Now we have the base parts of the uh, um, car uh, in, in white, and what we need to have a first rendering, of course, is our light. So. I just click on this light object, give it a V-Ray light tag, and in the light tags settings, I decide for the light type area. Okay, so this is what we need when we use an HDRI. And of course, please check enable shadows, because actually you want to have shadows. Common area light enable shadows, nothing else. We'll see to the intensity later on. Area light. Area uh, light type is area, so we have to go to the area light settings, of course. Area type has to be dome, and when you use the area light type dome, you want to use a texture, and this is where our HDRI image comes. We just load it from some place, installed it, and now this image is our light source. Spherical mapping is <coughs> there by default, this is correct. So what we do, we just um, take a first render, and I'm using Shift-R because I want to have the picture view render my image. Why is that so? I can compare the renderings. And this is very... Um, another advantage is that um, renders are always correct in the picture view, not always in the editor depending on some V-Ray parameters. Okay, this is much too dark, actually. So, what do we have to 
do? We can change the light intensity and we can change the camera parameters. And later on we will see that the reflection, subdivision and some global illumination parameters change the brightness of the image too. So we have a huge set of things that interact with each other as far as the brightness of the image is concerned. So most of the problems that beginners have and I have actually is uh, which kind of parameters should I, should I change and which uh, should I just keep and stick to. And I would strongly suggest that you stick to your camera settings in the first place. But the camera settings are not the right ones for a dark image like this. At least I think so. Because in reality what I would do, I would change the film ISO. I wouldn't take a film ISO of 100 when I take a picture in the dark or in a, in a night scene. But I would use something like 1600 for example. Okay? So this is what I would do with my normal camera. Something like this. Could be more, could be less, just depending on what my camera says, what I can do about f-stop and shutter speed after I adjusted this film ISO. So this gives me some flexibility to still use f-stop and shutter speed in quite a range. So this is what I need for my image um, when I, as far as uh, depth of field and, and, and speed of, of moving objects is concerned and so on. So um, basically I won't change this later on, but if you want to change this um, in a dark scene, you will have to stick to a really high uh, ISO value. So this is what I just um, take for a starting point and I will not change this throughout this process of uh, creating my image. So um, now another rendering will show that this is um, much brighter now because um, my film ISO has been enhanced. Okay, it comes near something I can make use of. It is still too dark, as you can see on the uh, window panes. And of course, um, a car wouldn't look like that in a lit scene, scenery like we have. And especially our uh, HDRI image looks really, really bad. And still, we, as we don't use this as a background image, as I told you before, because we have another image, uh, the same image basically, but as a backplate, but still we want to have the right colors being reflected on the car, so this is not what we want. So what do you have to do when you have a, um, an HDRI image? Always click on this small miniature and change the color profile to sRGB, okay? Always do this. In, in case you can't change anything about this, please be sure that under mode project this linear workflow um, option is checked. Okay, when this is not checked, you can't change the color profile of your imported HDRI. Okay, so I can do this. I change it to sRGB and I have this one rendered again. As you will see, uh, at least now the HDRI looks rather correct. It looks a bit weird still, but at least we have some real colors. You can compare the two images. Let's have this in large. You see, before, afterwards. Okay. I don't care about the uh, quality, the bad quality of how this looks in this uh, projection because we need this only for the reflection of the car's surface, not as a background image. Okay, so um, another thing. Let's stick to the picture view. Uh, what you can see is the colors play a major role in HDR lighting because um, actually this is the reason why you use HDRI lighting at all because you want to have colorful lights. So the colors of the HDRI are um, building up the light for the scene. So the colors play a major role and as you might know your camera, and now I'm leaving the picture viewer, has a white balance preset. And this changes the color of your rendering quite a bit. So what you should do in the first place, choose the white balance preset neutral. Because this doesn't change anything about your image. This is just taking the colors as they are and taking them as an image and that's it. Later on you can remove certain color tints by 
changing this white balance preset. And we'll do this actually, but in the first place, as a starting point, it's rather good and um, practical to just use neutral. Okay, so when we hit Shift R again, we'll see that the colors look a little bit different. Okay, again, we can compare. And perhaps it's not very easy to be seen. Let's enhance the car and compare the images. The further um, before image is, uh, has a reddish tinge, and my last one is rather neutral. Okay, rather. It's not supposed to be neutral anyway, but um, as we will see, it'll never be neutral actually. Okay, so this is white balance preset zero. Uh, neutral, I'm sorry. Good, so now we have to adjust the light intensity because, as I said, we stick to those camera parameters and first of all we stick to our render parameters so we change the light intensity in the comments tab and for some reason I like to take the lumen as a value. Of course you can do what you want, there are some pro reasons why to use lumen. I've got them actually <laughs> and I'll set these values to let's say 0.12. As a matter of fact I figured this out before and it uh, looked rather well so this is the result of this trying trial and error. Okay, this looks much better, as you can see, much lighter, okay? The light itself, the image itself is lighter too, but this doesn't uh, bother me because <coughs> we don't see this anyway. So this is somehow correct, so we will leave the HDRI for the moment. Oh no, we won't leave it for now because now we come to the shadow and there are some specific things about HDR that you can change to even change your shadow maps and I will show you how you can do that. First of all, of course, we need something that the shadow can be cast upon, so what we need is a plane. But by the way, I'm changing to my favorite layout I'm using all the time. I don't want to see the light, <coughs> so I just uncheck the visibility in the editor. My plane is just on the floor, as you can see, oops, no cube, sorry. The plane is on the floor and the car is right on the, as you can see, on the, uh, standing on the plane, so this is correct. If the whole situation is in the right position in the uh, further on background image is another thing, but first of all, this is correct. And we have to have a slightly bigger plane let's say like 600 by 600. So now uh, we should see some shadow. I render again. And of course this HDRI image casts shadow on this plane. And we'll see if this plane is huge enough. The shadow looks like this. Yeah, it is huge enough. The shadow looks rather stupid, I think, but there is some, some more shadows coming here, so perhaps we should just make it a little bit bigger, the plane, I mean. <clears throat> like, for example, let's say, don't know which value this is, ah, this one. Okay, so let's make this 800. Okay, so. Now, when you go back to the picture view, you can see the shadow is looking this way. And now I'll show you some uh, secret. This is not a secret, actually. I talked about this in uh, earlier videos, and it was not my idea, idea anyway. So uh, it comes from Peter Guthrie and, and some other guy I don't know right now. Uh, it was Bertrand Benoit. And what you can do about the shadows is changing the gamma of the um, HDRI light. So where do you do this? 
because when you go to the light tag settings, to the area light and the HDRI, you see you can't change the HDRI gamma. So what you have to do, you go one stage back and replace the HDR by a filter. And when you do that, you can click on the miniature and reduce the gamma, for example. So let's put this to 1.5. This is rather radical, as you will see. And we'll hit this Shift R again and see what the difference is. Uh, basically, I can tell you in advance, the contrast will be much higher and the contrast of the shadow will be much higher too. So this is what reducing the gamma does. You can use this when you have an exterior rendering. It's very nice. As you can see, um, it's growing much pinkier everywhere I do something. As you can see, the shadow is much crispier. If you compare it, it looks much, much different. Okay. So this is one thing. Of course, you can stick to another value like um, one point, uh, 0 0.8 or something. But I will show you the, what the difference is to 1.5. So this is higher than before. Higher than 1 looks like this. And it's much softer actually, okay? So this is changing the shadow looks. Actually, I like the softer shadows more. So what I will do is just to take a value like, let's say, 1.2, and let's see how this looks like because I found this uh, original shadow a little bit too sharp and too crispy. So what you can see when you change the gamma values, the brightness of the, of the image changes too, so you can, of course, <coughs> do something about that. That's still a bit too little, I think. Oh, okay, let's just leave it like that. Okie doke. So, First of all, we have finished with the HDRI. So this is what you can do. You can change the gamma to have different types of shadow images. Okay, And don't forget to check color profile sRGB. Of course, you could change the light direction via changing the light's direction. If you change the light's coordinates, just using the R point H angle, you can, of course, have the shadow going in other directions. But this is not what I want to do now.